What's going on, everybody? Thanks for tuning in. My name is Chase. Today's episode, we are taking a look at the Epiphone DG335. This thing is so pretty, dude. Um, I think this guitar is going to probably upset a lot of people. Um, maybe. At least what I have to say. A lot of you probably don't even care. But... The Dave Grohl 335 has been a guitar I've always wanted for a long time. I don't make doctor and lawyer money, so I can't afford the Gibson one. I think the resale on those right now is still like $15,000, uh, which is insane. So let's talk about the pros and cons for the Epiphone model. And we'll get some sound clips in and we'll kind of go from there. All right, so let's talk about fit and finish overall. Now, I think there's more pros than there are cons with this guitar. First and foremost, I bought this with my own money. Um, this was not given to me. It was not lent out. It was not, you know, any of that. So I bought this with my money. I bought it from Zounds, and I was originally told it was going to be available around mid-June. So I got mine early, and I'm super excited for that. Now... When it comes to the fit and finish of a guitar, you know, you, you get what you pay for. And Epiphone was always a budget guitar for a lot of people. They were still good, but they had a lot of flaws. And this guitar, I think, is showing a... Um, I think it's showing that an import guitar can still be a very nice quality. Uh, I'm not going to say it's a high-end quality guitar, but this is a really good... This is a gig-worthy guitar for a lot of people. And... One thing I've always noticed is that when you buy Epiphone, you will always get, you know, that little black handcrafted in China. And you would normally get one that has a little Epiphone logo for their QC with a number of like two or 43 or whoever, you know, did the QC of that guitar. And as you saw, mine does not have that. So I don't know if these are, you know, done at the Chinese factory for Gibson or Epiphone and then they're sent to Nashville and somebody there does it. Uh, so keep that in mind as I go over some of this stuff, because obviously I'm a nobody and I don't think anybody knows that I bought this. Like they're not going to go seek out my order or anything, but this is a really good guitar. The fit and finish is done very nicely. So I don't know if somebody removed that QC sticker. Uh, my box was previously open. There's two sets of different tape and that's how I could tell that it was open, but the action will start there. Out of the box, this was very playable. Uh, it was at 2.25, so 2.25 millimeters, which to me is a little high. Um, that's more for like slide guitar, I think. I personally like my electrics at about 1.75, so that's where I set it. Uh, after I set my action to my preferred or a personal preference, it's not a con, it's a personal preference, um, I had to adjust my intonation and the intonation was already really good. I only had to adjust two strings. That was my B string and my G string. So the intonation out of the box, thumbs up, action out of the box. Now, I mean, it was thumbs up. You could you could play it, uh, but it was a little high. Felt kind of like you're fighting it. Uh, so intonation, good to go. Action, good to go. Uh, the nut, we have a Graph Tech Tusk nut. Um, those are really good. Now, there is about a 16th of an inch right here on the side. See if it'll, you can't quite tell, but uh, there's a, it almost looks like the nut was filed down on one side uh, just a little bit too much. I don't know if those are fi uh, sanded um, to fit or if they're pre cut to fit. You know, I don't know how that works, but um, the thumb side is spot on. There's about a 16th of an inch. 
on the high E side. It's not a deal breaker and it's not enough to say it's a con. Um, then we got Grover mini tuners, which are always, you know, Grover is Grover. I have no complaints. They're smooth. They're fluid. Um, I have them on the Dave Mustang guitar that came with those. So no problems there. The fretboard itself is kind of dry, but I mean, a good setup, you'll take care of that with no problem. I'm not going to say it's a huge con, but it just something noted. It, it, it was dry. Uh, I haven't done my full setup yet. The fret inlays, they look really cool. They look like, I want to say plastic. I don't think they're real pearl or pearloid or, I don't know, I could be wrong. I'm going to have to go look at that. I'll put a note on the screen too. Let's talk about, while we're talking about the fretboard, the fret ends, right? Now fret ends can make or break the feel of a guitar for a lot of people, myself included. And um, if anybody watches Phil McKnight, um, he's got a great channel on a lot of this stuff, but he likes to do that sock test, you know, with like the pantyhose or the, uh, the foot sock or whatever it is. And dude, this thing would pass it all day. There is, there is no problem. There is no burrs or anything on this guitar. And again, that comes back to, did somebody else set this up before I got it? And I got footage. I'll try to post it. You can see tool marks on some of the frets where it looks like somebody, uh, you know, dressed the fret ends. Now, what they didn't do is they did not polish the frets. So they are a little rough, gritty, I guess you could say. Um, so keep that kind of in mind. But again, we're talking the price point, too. When you start polishing the edges of the nut, and this one is kind of sharp, um, not sharp as in it'll cut you, but, you know, it's pointy. Um, when you start addressing things like where somebody has to meticulously file and polish and sand, you're adding time that somebody had to do it. And that's where your cost is going to go up. So for the price point, I'm completely happy uh, with so far from this point down. Right. Um, the biggest con that I have is going to be I'm looking at my notes here is my poly finish. I don't like poly. Uh, it feels like plastic. Uh, and I had to accept that knowing where the guitar was coming from. You know, it was an Epiphone. Um, so I had to accept that. Poly is kind of noisy. You can kind of hear all the little creaks and stuff it's doing. Um, I don't know. It's, I'm not a big fan of poly. I don't like huge gloss guitars. But the neck, and I'm going to call this personal preference as well. The neck is also glossed over. Uh, so that can make or break the feel. Now, what you can do, for those of you who don't know, is you can take a scotch bright pad from like your kitchen, uh, the yellow and green or the blue colored uh, rough part, and you can just rub it, rub it out. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, it'll take down some of that gloss and it'll, uh, you know, kind of shine it up or um, satin it up and it'll make it more enjoyable. So I will be doing that to mine here shortly. What we can also do is talk about the overall fit and finish, because the quality of this is really nice. I don't have any major imperfections. There is one, and I'm going to show you here in a minute. There is an imperfection in the paint before the poly coat got done. And it's really, really small. You can almost not see it. Uh, but see if I can get this on camera here. All right, we got it focused and get the light out. It's right. It's right there. You guys see that? Yep. So what it looks like is something bumped it while the blue paint was wet, like just barely brushed over it. Maybe a paint cord or, you know, bumped the stand coming off. I don't know. But there's a little tiny spot there. Things like this, some people are going to complain about. Oh, my God, the cost of that, it should be spotless. Bob. No, dude, look, uh, for the cost of this guitar, that's not going to make or break me. Uh, if anything, that now became an identifiable mark in the event somebody should steal this or something should happen. OK, that is small, tiny things like that. Those are good. At least I think they are. Uh, it's so small. It's you, you really from this distance, you can't see it. Can you even can you see it? No, you can't see it, can you? Now, if you hold it just right and the light hits it just right, you can kind of make it out. But I'm not worried about that. Now, electronics. This is somewhere else where Epiphone has always really skimped. Um, I've never liked Epiphone pickups. These are Gibson made USA pickups. This is a Gibson Burstbucker 3. 
and a Gibson Burst Bucker number two. This is my personal favorite set from Gibson. Um, I don't like their 480 or the 490s, you know, whatever those are called. Not a big fan of those. But this particular set is incredible. For me, my personal opinion. Uh, these are great. So having them already installed, you're saving money. I mean, out of the money you're paying for this, a large portion of that is going to just those pickups. Then you have your CTS pots. Try to get this around the camera here. We got CTS pots. We've got all the electronics are upgraded. So you got CTS, USA pots. Switchcraft jack and switch but the bridge and the tailpiece those are just the regular epiphone bridge and tailpiece so overall for the cost of this guitar um i think it's really really nice i think it's um i think it's well worth it i'm i'm thoroughly impressed this is probably this is the best epiphone that i've ever purchased not even gonna lie um I kind of wanted it to be worse off than it was so I could justify sending it back. But this thing is actually really nicely made. I'm kind of impressed. I'm a little over impressed. So kudos to the uh, the fine builders who are doing the at least this particular you know model it, it, for the money. This is a really good bang for the buck, man. Um, if you can get it used on the used market, you'd probably get it for you know 900 bucks maybe. I think that'd be a really good price. Um, but yeah, this, this is great, man. All right, there you have it. That is the Dave Grohl DG335 from Epiphone. This has been an incredible little guitar. I can't wait to uh, you know play it, break it in, and um, we'll see how it holds up over the next couple of months, and we'll do a review again on the upkeep um, and things like that. So again, the only complaints for me were um, the the sat or the uh, the poly finish on the neck. I think that's kind of a con because it's I don't like poly, but that could be a personal preference. The action on the guitar, I don't even know if I talked about that, but the action was out of the box, ready to go. Uh, it was at a 2.25 millimeters, so that is kind of high, uh, like slide guitar kind of high, but uh, I adjusted my action. Again, that's personal preference. So I have mine set to a 1.75 millimeters. Um, and when you did that, I had to readjust my intonation. I was expecting it to be pretty bad uh, just because it's an Epiphone style uh, bridge. And the intonation was almost perfect. I only had to adjust my B and my G string. I don't know if I already said that. Um, so, you know, personal preference stuff there. Uh, so I think for the price of the guitar, you're getting a hard shell case, Gibson USA pickups, CTS pots, Switchcraft jacks, Graftech nut, and uh, some Grover tuners. This is a win all day long. I recommend it. I'm going to go to play it some more. And yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Today's gear, obviously, we're doing the Epiphone DG335, the Dave Grohl signature. We are going into my Klon KTR, and that's going into my Runt 50. You know, got to kind of get that, that live sound for the Foo Fighters going. And uh, anyways, tell me in the comments below what you guys think. I'll see you in the next one.